Hi, in this episode we're going to talk about how to design and laser cut the stained glass chapel for your tabletop terrain. Hi, welcome to another episode of Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this is my third and final episode about making wargaming tabletop terrain. Today's project is the stained glass chapel. It was designed in Adobe Illustrator, cut on a laser cutter, and assembled using a lot of the same techniques I showed a few weeks ago for this scale model building here. What really makes this special, obviously, is the stained glass. And it's not really glass, it's acrylic, and it's fused together. And I think that the techniques I'm going to show you have application for many different projects. So I'm really going to focus on that in this episode. I picked a real chapel for my inspiration. This is the Alice Miller Chapel in Northwestern University. And I found these two, these were the two best images I could find, and I had to flatten them in Photoshop to use them as reference photos in Adobe Illustrator. It has these stone pillars on the front and the sides, and it has this wonderful stone pattern that I tried to use in some of my design. On the side, those stone pillars are between every stained glass window, and you can see each of them have a point on the top, and so I'm going to replicate that. If you haven't seen my prior video on making the scale model building, I'd suggest looking at that to see some of these techniques in more detail. But it is a tab and slot system, and I actually brought in the tabs and slots from that drawing as a reference for this drawing so I could make them the same size. I have a simple floor with four walls. And here's what the front and back look like. They, they're the same. I have a double door. I have two windows. And I put a circular window in the peak of the front and back. It has a slanted roof, which is different from my other building. But I actually am using the exact same doors that I used there for this chapel. I want the roof to be removable. And I'm going to have one of those pointy uh, pillars here between each of the windows. And the roof has to have a notch in it that will fit around that point, and that's part of what keeps the roof on. Also, one side of the roof is an eighth of an inch longer than the other because of the way it abuts at the top. I put the stone pattern on the facade pieces, and I talk in my earlier video about how to optimize these designs so that they don't take forever to engrave. These are the circular windows, and I cut a pair and a spare because I always like to have extras. And this is what the actual window looks like. There's 12 of these windows in the design. And let's talk about how I created those. On this layer, I just play with colors to see what colors I want to cut in the acrylic to fill it in in the final design. But this is my reference photo. Um, obviously, I'm only going to use one side of it. And I use my pen tool to draw uh, a design that is similar to the reference photo. Some of these shapes are closed shapes, but a lot of them are just straight lines that I drew over the reference photo. And that isn't going to be a good form for me to use to create stained glass. I want everything to be these enclosed shapes, not just the straight lines. So how do I do that? I started by selecting everything and making it three points, which I thought would be fat enough, but in retrospect, I should have made them thicker, five or six points at least. And then I exported a JPEG of this image so that I would have a black and white image. Then I placed the black and white image on another layer, and I did what I've shown in many other videos. Uh, I did an image trace, make and expand, and it translates everything into uh, enclosed shapes. And it even draws double lines, as you see, around the fat black lines, and that's going to act as my leading or the, it simulates the leading in my stained glass. You have to be careful when you do the image trace to say to ignore the white spaces or you will get double lines. You only want one copy of each of these red cut lines. But you see it's just what we want. We have a lot of enclosed spaces. You can put fills in those to simulate the colors in your stained glass. Kerf is the amount of material taken out by the laser as it cuts. And I have found that with my acrylic, I do not need to adjust the sizes of the pieces to get a tight enough fit to fuse it together. But to make the window more durable and easier to install, I back it with a piece of eighth inch clear acrylic, and I cut that just a little bit larger than the window. 
The first thing I did at Tech Shop was start testing the window and I quickly found out that my leading was too thin and I had to make adjustments to my drawing. I also tried cutting over MDF to see if I could remove the paper before cutting, but you can see the pieces popped out because I was blocking the suction on the laser cutter bed. So I had to come up with a method to remove all this paper after the windows were made. All of the parts of the building cut very quickly. The only thing that takes any time is the facade here, and it only took about 25 minutes uh, because I optimized the stone pattern. I tested my plan for window assembly on one of my extra little windows, and here's what I ended up doing. I assemble the window on masking tape, and then I fuse it from the front with the paper still on the back. A couple minutes later, when it's fused, I peel the masking tape off. Then I lay them all paper side down in a cookie sheet, and I pour in enough simple green to barely cover the windows. An hour later, I pulled them out and used a wooden chopstick to help me peel the paper off the back, but it came off pretty easily at that point. The final step was to fuse each window to its own clear acrylic back. And this was cut a little bit bigger than the window, but I knew that on the front and the back, these windows are very close together, so I had to make sure that I had the right spacing. I ended up making matched pairs for each of the front and the back. And then the rest of the windows I could fuse into the center of the backing piece. So here's my components. I had my windows, I have my floor, I have my front and back. Of course, everything's painted before it's assembled. The sides and the roof and the facade and the doors. I used wood glue for my assembly. I used ultra suede as the hinges of the doors and I glue those up in advance and let them dry. Put my little feet on the floor and then I start assembling the building. It doesn't really take very long but you obviously have to stop and let it set up a little bit before you move on to the next section. For the facade, I had to put the roof on uh, just so I got the placement correct of all the facade pieces. I am not gluing the roof on because as I said I want that to be removable and I also have not glued it to the floor. I am able to lift this all off the base. The windows pop in quite easily with a little bit of glue around the clear acrylic flange. And here's the final result, the stained glass chapel with one of my puck lights inside. You can see the scale is a good fit for my minis. Here I am demonstrating that the roof really comes off and goes back on. Both sides actually come off and go back on. And my Art Deco designed windows uh, makes the chapel a good match for the building that I made in my last episode. And they all run off the same remote. I hope you've enjoyed these terrain videos and I have lots of other good ideas so please subscribe to my YouTube channel.